Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, sir? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've been in recruitment ever since I uh, finished university. I haven't really fell, I fell into it and I really haven't found a way out of it, but uh, I love it. It's a, it's a passion of mine and love the, the technical side of it. So I'm a technical recruiter here at IOHK, helping to, to build our teams and, and grow us and help deliver against strategic objectives. So Dave, in the grand scheme of things, what does a technical recruiter do? What, how does that differ from a just a recruiter? What exactly does that entail? Interesting question. Yeah. And some people in the industry have their, their own viewpoints on what a technical recruiter is. But really, for me, it, it, it is, as you'd expect from the title, understanding technology and how technology is applied to, me, to meet business objectives. I'm not going to tell that. I have done some of my background, but it's, it's not what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But my role is to connect with technical people and understand the background and experience and relevancy to roles that we recruit here at IOHK. So in terms of the projects or the products that um, Cardano has, so we have Plutus, we have Marlowe, we have Yellow, we have KEVM. Is there a specific product that you're that you're aligned to as a technical recruiter or are you are you recruiting for all of these everything that cardano has to do work across the board it depends where the, the demand is at the point in time i'm not the only technical recruiter so we do divide responsibilities up between us depending upon workload we do tend to fall into certain areas of specialism a colleague of mine has picked up some of the um, the roles on maybe marlow and plutus but that'd be more on cardano and enterprise but it just depends at that point in time where the, where the need is and, and how big it is, if you know what I mean. I understand. So what's what's your strategy? How What's the most effective way to get the up-and-coming talent? I mean, I know this is a decentralized project, so mm. it must be very difficult to contact all these different talented people from all across the world. Is there a certain conference that you go to? How do you find the talent? It was a very interesting question and in, in why we are decentralized and it opens up uh, larger talent pools across the across the world there's always demand for the for the best talent to bring into a into a business to always obviously work hard and try and develop pipelines of candidates who are interested in for potential future needs but sometimes when you've got uh, urgent requirements on your on your doorstep you need to deliver against those first and foremost so software engineering is a very high demand field people who are skilled in software engineering uh, there's all these companies out there competing with them. How does that affect what you do? Well, it's just always been a highly competitive competitive market. You need to try and differentiate yourself from the others. Now, sometimes people just see it as it, it comes down to money, but realistically, organizations such as IOHK, we offer so much more to projects that people are going to be working on and the difference that they're going to make, be making to the, the end result. So it's about getting that, that message across that we are different. Um, and we can offer something very different to, to people coming in. Anybody can go somewhere and crank some code out, but if they want to be part of something and go on a journey, that's that's really what we are offering software engineers when they come and join IOHK. Uh, so uh, what kind of qualifications should someone have that, that that's the type of person you're looking for? Would it just be a general purpose programmer who's willing to go out on an adventure, or are you looking for specific Haskell skills still at this point? There's still specific skills at this point in time. It is really going to depend on the project need that, that comes through. Um, we need people who have experience, who you know they've got some of the scars, they've, they've, they've done it in the past, but of course they want to make a difference now. So we do look for experienced people. Um, we're obviously looking to build our schemes where we'd be able to offer things, uh, situations to graduates and, and schemes to help people develop, but we actually at the minute need people who can come in and make a difference from, from day one. So what's a day in the life of Dave? Like, what do you do from morning to sundown? How, how does your work schedule relate to all this? Okay, so it's an interesting one, but obviously you have to, you have to you plan your day out. And of course, normally when I'm, I'm dealing with, with candidates and organizing things, you have a, a fairly tight schedule. So checking your calendars in order. Um, obviously catching up with, with messages because I get them all across all, all sorts of mediums and we slack across the, the business. But obviously we naturally have email, but then we've got social media groups. So it's just making sure um, people are where they should be. I'm a facilitator. That's what I do in, in recruitment, help facilitate and oil the cogs. So on one side, I've got the candidates. On the other side, I've got the, the hiring community. And it's just making sure I can, I can bring them together. So once you've identified a candidate and introduced them to the process, it's making sure that process goes as smoothly as possible, not just for the, the candidate and their experience, but also the manager and their experience. The, the time is important. So for me, it's it's staying on top of things as much as I can, trying to get ahead of the, 
of any potential problems that, that may come up, but obviously just making sure that, that people are reviewed and attend interviews and are given feedback. And of course, the correct candidates are introduced to the business. That must make for a challenging day because I could imagine you probably, let's say you get 10 resumes and then you you screen through them and five people are acceptable and then you get those uh, people together and then you present the information to a hiring manager. Uh, how many, what's the success rate? Like you screen 10 resumes, you talk to five people, then you want to get them hired. Uh, would you get one out of 10 maybe or lower? It's an interesting one. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of metrics around about recruitment, about you should be, you say you're screening 10, you get five, you get down, you get maybe you get two to interview, something like that. Um, well, I've seen the metrics and, and looked at them. If you get a good person, you know you've got a good person. So you might, you might screen two or three CVs and go, well, this is just a standout candidate. You know, The thing when you're internal and you're working with the business, you understand what the business looks for. So you get a really good feel. So when you when I screen those people, there's some that, that won't be get, getting sent to the hiring community because they don't feel they've got the right blend of skills or the cultural alignment um, that will match what the, the business is looking for. So I couldn't give you hard and fast that I send five CVs onto a manager and I get three interviews out of them. It could be I send them two and we get two interviews and we want to hire both of them. And then there's a, a, a good decision to be made, a good problem to have. Wow. Do you have to travel a lot? Um, not as yet, not not as much, but I have a feeling that's going to going to change. We do need to expand our, our whole re uh, recruitment um, department, and getting out and attending some workshops and work fairs and conferences is, is very much high on the agenda and spreading the word and the message about IOHK and, and why it's good to come work for us. There are a lot of people that drop comments in my YouTube comment section from the beginning of when I started making videos, saying that they're interested in working for IOHK. What is something that they can do to stand out? I know it's a very competitive field. You know, I see, is it is it like personal projects or a personal portfolio that could stand out for you? Or is it just like I graduated from this school, I, I completed this program in high school, I can, I'm qualified to do this? Or are you looking for someone that maybe stepped out of the box and did something very creative? Is there anything that you can say um, regarding this? I mean, the things that definitely stand out for candidates is you could have someone who's, who's a programmer, okay, they've got a degree and they've been working for X amount of years, but it's the ones that maybe who've been involved in, in other areas and, and think, like you said, a little bit outside the box. Where a business is still growing and evolving, it's not like an IBM where you go and you're going to sit in a silo and that's, that's you doing that. We like people who come in and, and can bring ideas to the table as well. Senior management is very open to that, and that's going to be a key part of our, our business grows with people bringing ideas to the table. So certainly involvement in the open source community stands out a lot for us, but naturally we like people who have blockchain and cryptocurrency knowledge and experience. Now that could come from a user. They could, be, they could hold ADA, they could use a Daedalus wallet, they may hold Bitcoin or something else, but they've got an interest in it, and it's certainly it's extra curriculum. It's the extra effort and input that they they want to they want to put into to their learning and their their development. It's not just that I can crank some code out, but of course there, there are other elements, not just the, the technical side of things. They understand the domain, as I mentioned there, but also culturally how how can they fit into the business? Every business wants to have the right fit, and it's got to be right from both sides. This isn't just saying you don't fit us. It, it go do we fit you as well? Can we offer you something? And you mentioned. Um... Like, for example, a, an engineer being in a silo at IBM and having a certain delegated role. So are you implying that the when you're recruiting and an individual comes and works for IOHK, they have a lot more creative control as to where their individual projects are going? Or is that is that too much to say? I would say the control of the project because the, the project is, is the project. But the fact that we're, we're growing and when people come into the business, if they're bringing ideas and the close involvement, we have a fairly flat structure. So there's a lot of people are known, known to others. And if someone's coming in and brings some ideas to the table, you could find that they end up moving on to a different project or into a slightly different role. So there's evolution there for them. Um, a little bit of that comes down to the individual and the drive that they have to do that. Some people, and there's nothing wrong with it, some people like coming and doing the job that they do. And that's absolutely fine. You get that across the board. Other people come and go, well, I'm a business analyst now. I like to move into product management down the future. And that's certainly something we, we can offer as, as, the, as the business grows and we're recruiting more people and more roles become open. People can move into different areas and that may give them the responsibility on a different project. Interesting. Interesting. And then you also previously mentioned that, of course, they would have to have some kind of interest in cryptocurrency or be related in this field. So 
So what's your story? How did you get involved with Cardano, such a niche project? How did you get involved with cryptocurrency in general? It's an interesting one. And unfortunately, obviously, I'm, I'm still working. So I missed the whole um, Bitcoin bubble and, and making me millions and going sitting on my me, me beach. But it, I, I was aware of it, of course, when it, as it blew up and it stoked me interest. Started looking at the whole blockchain and crypto space, trying to get my head around what it was and what it would mean. Um, then I had a contact of mine who actually started working for IOHK, so obviously I looked at IOHK and to be honest I was just I was blown away by the, the, the information on the website and the story it was telling, it just captivated me. So it wasn't just the tech side of it, it was actually, there was a vision and purpose into building Cardano and what IOHK are doing and you know, what it would mean for millions around, around the world. So really it just sort of sucked me in. So I'm, I'm not here saying I've been in it from the start and I know, I know everything inside out, but uh, it hooked me and I'm here. And I'm now, and I like telling the story.